Hi, I'm Tom Marks with the Marks Law Firm in Orlando, Florida, and welcome to the Healthy Family Law Attorney. I have a relationship expert on the channel today, a good friend, Janie Lacey. She's a licensed relationship trauma psychotherapist with over 15 years of experience in the field of relationship trauma. She's also on the faculty of International Institute of Trauma and Addiction Professionals and an entrepreneur who took her counseling business from a solo practice to a group specialty practice. Uh, Dr. Janie helps women overcome toxic relationships. She's the creator of Woman Redeemed, an intensive group experience that uses proven therapy strategies to start women on their healing journey. Janie, how are you today? I am doing well. I'm glad to be here. Healthy family. I love that. Healthy family. Yes. I want to add hope and help to families to help them get through the family law process. Not an easy process, but you're someone who offers a lot of hope and help. And today I, I want to kind of talk about narcissism a little bit. I know you have some expertise in there. Can you tell us what is a narcissist, kind of the definition textbook for us? You know, we think about narcissists or narcissism. Sometimes it's an actually an overused term, uh, Tom, whether we're look, looking at movies or people just talking about, oh, I think my, my spouse is a, is a narcissist. But, but in its basic, basic definition, if I had to um, give you my basic definition, it's often when we find people that are around us that have excessively self-focused where the world really does revolve around them. And sometimes you can find that in the conversation. If I'm the narcissist and you and I are having a conversation and Tom is telling me that he had a great weekend about skiing this weekend, I'm going to turn the conversation. Well, you know what? I've been to there too. And I've done this bigger and better. And right. So everything gets become self-focused on the narcissist and it's excessive because some people will say, well, don't we all have a little bit of narcissism in us? Absolutely. Right. But there's some other key things that uh, would make it more destructive to be in relationship with a narcissist in particular. We know. I think that's absolutely true. Um, we all have some level of narcissism in us. Otherwise, we wouldn't take care of ourselves. Right. But it's, as you say, that excessive narcissism. So let's talk about narcissistic traits versus kind of that clinically diagnosed narcissism. What's the difference there? So narcissism is exactly that. It's looking at someone's traits where from the DSM, we have narcissistic personality disorder and we refer that refer that to as NPD, right? So when we're looking at NPD, that's where the person really is about grandiose and there's continuous desire for admiration along with, and this is a key, a lack of empathy. And when it comes to narcissistic personality disorder, it usually starts in early adulthood, adulthood and it occurs in many different situations. But we're looking for five where we kind of diagnose someone. There's diagnostic tools that can clinically diagnose someone, but we're, we're looking for five traits out of nine, right? So those nine traits that we look at and they have to have five consistently. There's this over infatuated sense of self-importance, which we've mentioned. And there's this constant thought about being more successful, powerful, smart, loved, attraction to other people. There's this feeling of superiority and there's a desire to only associate with high high status people. And then we'll also see that there's this need for, and, and the key word is excessive admiration and social media, you know, a, com a comment there, social media has kind of been like a, a drug for narcissists, so to speak, but there's a sense of entitlement and there's this willingness that happens where they take advantage of others to achieve their goals. And that's also key. And there's a lack of understanding and consideration for other people's feelings and their needs. And then, you know, sometimes you'll hear the, the common um, terms of being arrogant or having snobby behaviors and, and attitudes. But we're looking for them to have five of those characteristics that are dominant throughout their life minimally. And that's where we look at narcissistic personality disorder. But most people, as long as we're breathing, have some level of narcissism, but it's on a spectrum. And that spectrum is when it gets more towards higher characteristics and higher traits of narcissism, it becomes more destructive in that person's relationships because they truly are empty inside. Right. And, you know, it's very common uh, for me in, in the family law setting, uh, clients come in and it's very common to say, I think my husband, my, my wife, my boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, my former spouse 
is a narcissist and all of the issues, of course, if they're in seeing a family law attorney, it's not because their marriage is going great, right? So they're going to have issues, obviously, before they come in here. But how do you how do you talk to a client who is in a narcissistic relationship to really know, are they? Is it a narcissistic relationship? Yeah, and this is a common question, especially when people come uh, to see to seek my services in particular. And usually that wife or that spouse, or it can be both ways, but usually for me, it's more of a, the woman that has um, almost these trauma responses to what would or otherwise normally be normal marital situations. So you have to really be in the relationship. And that's why for someone that works with someone who thinks that their spouse may be narcissistic, we don't minimize her experience, right? So you know, there's some common characteristics that I've mentioned and I'll um, kind of highlight some of some others as well, but really lacking empathy, right? So constantly there is a, this lack of empathy where there's not a level of, because if we look at it from a healthy, as we talk about healthy families, a healthy family is that I can disagree with my son, but I can also show him empathy, right? I don't mean, that doesn't mean I have to, I can have the maturity where I can hold space for his opinion, but I can show him empathy. So they lack empathy. They are entitled. They expect to have special treatment <laughs> to be given to them. And if you're in a conversation, I know I've been in conversations over, you know, barbecue and they have this grandiose, this grandiose sense of self. They have huge fantasies and their child would be like, well, we've only actually really caught two fish dad and dad's telling everyone we caught 10 fish and they were this big and the son is looking at him like well dad it was really only two right so it's that grandioseness um you'll see the family that sees that and they usually are only interested and in, again on people on their level that can make them look good um in that sense and people will say to me the time they'll say well doesn't don't we all want to be around people that make us look good the difference is no we want to be around people that make us feel good big difference, right? But they only want to be around people that make them look good. So they're usually very superficial and they're concerned about their appearances. And I'm not talking about normal maintenance and keeping up with themselves, but there's an over-concern about their appearance and they don't regulate. This is where, well, you'll probably see it just as much as I will. They don't regulate their emotions very well. So they're very prone to throwing tantrums. You know, if they're going through a nasty divorce and from, from the standpoint, some narcissists actually use the courtroom to their to their benefit because they know how to poke the the poke the bear and get all the reactions of their spouse. But they'll throw tantrums, they get angry very quickly, and they're hypersensitive to criticism. And sometimes this is a type of personality where they can dish it, but they can't take it. <laughs> and they'll tend to be very jealous. And the, there's a term that people will hear when it comes to narcissism. It's called gaslighting. They'll tend to engage in, in gaslighting behavior. And pretty much the basic term is they're denying your reality. Um, and then you start questioning your own reality. Well, maybe that didn't happen. And usually a key would be, well, you said this last week. Well, no, I didn't say that. And then you're like, oh, maybe they didn't say that. And then you start questioning your own reality. And another one, there's, there's plenty, but the last one I'll, I'll leave uh, with that is that they're not very loyal, even though they expect loyalty, expect loyalty, but they themselves are not very loyal and they can be very mean to the people that are closest to them. This is where you'll see it in family therapy and family law. It's usually the people that that are really in their tight circle because when they go to work, people love them. They see all the great, they see all the great side of them because again, they're getting what we call a supply, the grandiose, they're the great greatest thing. But to home, they're mean, they're disconnected to their to their family. So those would be some signs of someone's watching and listening. They're trying to educate themselves that potentially there may be in a relationship with someone who has strong narcissistic traits that are harmful to the relationship. Wow, that's some great content. I can tell you could probably talk about that for like two hours straight. I mean, I think I just learned more about narcissism as a family law attorney in that uh, less than five minutes than uh, I have in like probably the last two years. So thank you for that. You did say one thing that really kind of piqued my interest. Just real quick, you, tell, you said a lot of women come in and say their husband's a narcissist. Are there any stats on whether men or women are more often than narcissists? Yeah, so the last stats that I'm aware of, 5% of the population would be considered narcissistic personality disorder, just to kind of put things in perspective. But there's a higher percentage of men that would be classified as high, having higher narcissistic traits. And many times, you know, just to kind of um, make a comment on that briefly, sometimes it comes from family of origin, but it also comes from environment, 
right? If you kind of bring up the just how men have been um, trained through the years, being the caregivers, being the ones. So I think there's environmental factors there. I don't have a whole lot of um, research to back it up right in this moment, but family of origin, environmental factors, and the research does show that there's a higher population of men being narcissistic but this is uh this is actually an interesting tom women go undetected <laughs> so when women that have narcissistic traits that are um abusive in relationships they go undetected because most of the time from a male perspective they are looking at their spouses let's look at it from a relationship standpoint they're looking at their spouses as almost an extension of them versus even what she may be doing to him is abusive. Men take a lot more abuse in relationships than um, I would say have a higher tolerance for abuse in relationship to a certain degree more than women. Women are, are quick to get help, quick to stand up where men will kind of take it on because they feel like they have to from that to toxic masculinity standpoint, will allow their spouse to speak to them any, anyway. But the, uh, another comment there is social media has exposed, you know, we have this joke in our field that social media has exposed more narcissists than ever, right? She's constantly has a selfie. You go to her Instagram, every single picture is her in a different outfit, right? So there's a certain level of there that um, that that is known. Now, everyone does that in case they're watching. It doesn't mean they're narcissistic, but usually there's some other characteristics along with that. It's about themselves because it's real easy to post a picture, right? And then I get an instant supply to say like, 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 right? Or nice dress or whatever the comment may be. Yeah. So all that makes uh, really a lot of sense to me. And I, I could make several comments about it um like one uh it's the bat i don't know the percentage but uh, the large majority of my clients that actually say their spouse is a narcissist it's usually my female clients that are saying their husbands are narcissists and um, to comment on the social media um it has become a huge issue a huge problem in family law cases i mean it's almost like I don't want to say malpractice, but it's it's a huge mistake for a family law attorney not to check the social media that's public of not only their own client, but the other side, because I mean, I can't tell you how many cases I've kind of won on social media where somebody's not supposed to be drinking, maybe they have sober link, they have whatever, and they're at a party just drinking away. And it's like, it's all on social media and it's it's admissible. Anyway, all right, let's wrap this up. Um, let's provide some hope and help to our clients, okay? Because they need that, and that's what this is all about. Um, what are some of the best ways to cope with an art, you know, dealing with a spouse or significant other that's a narcissist? And what are some of the ways you can actually thrive? You know, when I think about my mind goes to co-parenting, and this would be your space as well. But you know, when it comes to having to co-parent with a narcissist, that's one. And then we have relation being in a relationship with a narcissist. I'll make a comment there in a minute. But there's some best practices that I know I tell my clients that are in a divorce proceeding is to put everything in writing. And when it comes to co this is co-parenting, put everything in writing. There's uh, apps to use this, uh, co-parenting apps, and to keep their comments. And this is where therapy is important to keep their comments and their reactions to a minimal. <laughs> And that's important. I'm talking about their reactions and their comments. That's not based in facts. So they have to keep their emotions out of the co-parenting process to be in a to be in a good, healthy for them relationship, co-parenting relationship with a narcissistic person. And then some other um, key things is they have to be direct and stick to the facts, especially if a woman has been traumatized by this relationship. She can get into her feelings really quickly and gets triggered. And then the next thing you know, that's also a supply from a narcissistic standpoint, because aha, look at her. Right. And then she's on the, she's in her emotional space and everyone that's around them is looking at the emotional person. So they have to be direct and stick to the facts. And I always say, do not engage. in he said, she said, especially when it comes to kids, they have to be the person who's um, in a relationship with the narcissist, be truthful. And they can also be friendly. A lot of times the wives are like, I never want to see this person again. And the kids end up being put in the middle. I'm like, you can be just as you would in a grocery store. You can still be friendly because that's showing your emotional maturity. So that's how about you controlling your emotions. And then I'll um, suggest to not depend on the narcissistic person because that kind of creates an imbalance. So it's harder to stay in a place of thriving and coping and then ignoring what their narcissist ex does in their home. And to your point, after a divorce, not checking their social media, social media stalking, because then it's going to preoccupy, I say, rent space in your head and you're not going to be present for your kids. And then all these other types of things that can interfere in the process. So set emotional and physical boundaries and be firm. 
And if someone's going to be in a relationship, and this is this is also just a, a great tip for people in general, if you're going to be in a relationship with someone who has higher narcissistic character traits, you have to manage your expectations. People, you can't love someone enough. You can't sex them enough. You can't cook them enough out of their issues. So a lot of times in particular, my weight, my women clients will think, well, I just, if I just love them enough, or if I just tolerate this enough that somehow they're going to wake up and now appreciate me and see all my wonderful traits, it doesn't work that way. So you have to manage your expectations and not live in a fantasy of who they can be, but the reality of who they are. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Um, I know we're almost out of time. You've like, you've like just really energized a lot of my ideas and questions and thoughts. Um, we may have to do another video because um, I'd really like to talk about some of the ways that I, when I go uh, to mediation or I'm in any uh, settlement discussion or negotiations with a narcissist, how I've found very um, um, successful ways of dealing with the narcissist because they love to talk about themselves they love to be flattered and if you know in the right way of course and you can't be stupid about it but if you ask them what is it really you want they'll they love that question because they want to tell you because really what they want is really all that really matters so we'll talk about that hopefully in the future let's finish with um what i love to bring up and because this is the healthy family law attorney i always ask my uh, guests do you have a healthy tip for our audience Absolutely. You know, when I think about a healthy tip, not only just for people that may have experienced being in a relationship with a narcissist, but in relationships in general, and I'm going to go back to, we have to manage our expectations. The greater the dis distance between our expectations and the reality, the greater our disappointment. So part of that is we also, and I'm a big believer, and I'm very, I have to say this, very, very pro marriage. But when I say this, people can get it confused. Our marriages should not our life should not revolve around our marriages. We have to have other healthy relationships like friendships, have our own hobbies and passions that bring us joy. It's a lot of pressure to think a relationship or a marriage is going to make you happy and be it all. The longer any of us have been married to realize that you have your own individual purpose. No one's going in the grave with us except us. So my, my goal is that people, everyone should deserve to have healthy relationships and that can be romantic or friendships. And we have to start with managing our expectations, get to a place of emotional maturity and cultivate other areas in our life, our spirituality, understand our emotions, our hobbies, and our passions so that we bring our, our A game wherever, ever relationship we're in, Tom. That's my tip. Well, you know, that is a great coaching tip. I love that. I mean, managing expectations is something that I'm keen on. I coach my clients on that. So that's an awesome tip. So Janie, you've given us some great information today. I would say to our audience that if you have any questions or comments uh, for Janie or for me, just leave those in the comment section below. We'll get back to you. We'll make sure we do that. Um, if you like the video, please uh, hit that like button, subscribe, uh, hit that bell icon and never miss a uh, future video. Um, Janie, I'm gonna put you on the spot. I really wanna have you back on the channel because you are amazing. Would you be willing to come back sometime? Yeah, of course, I wanna hear some of your tips on how do you manage those narcissists in the courtroom? <laughs> uh, you, you've been amazing today. I have really enjoyed this and I know our audience has too. So with that, we'll say, um, we'll see you next week on our next video and uh, just keep a lookout for the next video with Janie Lacey. Thanks so much and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.